thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather. Lord, again, for a time of fellowship. Lord, a time to gather around the Word of God. Lord, a time to sing and worship today. God, we just bless you, God, for this opportunity, Lord, with the folks today. I pray, God, you'd help us. Lord, I pray we'd leave here today, Lord, feeling uh, Lord, feeling good about being servants of the Lord and being born again. And Lord, we feel good, Lord, about going out into the world and, and Lord, standing true and standing tall for our faith. Bless us now together. Bless the Word of God. Lord, help me. God, I'd rightly divide the Word of truth. God, put me aside. I pray in the Spirit of God would take over. Lord, walking up and down these pews and around behind this pulpit and down the aisles, God, I pray and speak to our hearts. And for what you do, we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 9. Hebrews chapter number 9. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 9. I'm going to begin reading with verse number 1. And we'll read the entire chapter this morning. I'll not preach to you too long, I don't think. And then again, I may. Amen. But we, we were praying for the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God this morning. Hebrews chapter number 9 and verse number 1. <clears throat> this message, uh, we title our message today, it's, it's the bloody religion. Now, Baptists have been accused of many things over the years. And one thing we've been accused of, or anyone that believes the Bible and believes that what I'm preaching to you about this morning is, is true and real and right, uh, we've been accused of having a bloody religion. Not only because it is of the blood of Christ that we're saved, but because uh, years into the, you know, because of our belief, much blood has been shed. But as we read this chapter to you, I want you to notice every time the word blood is mentioned in this chapter, ten times in this chapter, if I counted right, if I, if I missed any, I'll add them. But ten times in this chapter, the word blood is mentioned. Verse, verse number one of Hebrews chapter number nine. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of the glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. And into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this uh, signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ be, being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered him once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifying to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the a test of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead, otherwise it is no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood, 
For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled upon the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the New Testament which God hath enjoined you. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood both in the tabernacle and, uh, and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Amen. Now this is a lot of reading and I'm going to read the rest of it. But I'll tell you something, friend, there's no richer chapter in the Word of God than this very chapter that we're reading to you today. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now listen now. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Amen. Jesus died for me one time, one time only he died for me to save me from eternity in hell. Amen. So Christ, <clears throat> verse 27, and it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now that's 11 times, I believe, in, the, in this chapter that the word blood is mentioned. Blood in the, in the Word of God is mentioned 447 times, 10, 11 times in this chapter. And you go back and you see the blood mentioned in the, in the Old Testament. We know some things about blood. We know that blood is essential to life. And if you don't believe that, amen, uh, then without blood you're not alive. You cannot live without the blood that courses through your body. And uh, people, sometimes people get injured and if not treated real quickly with a, a wound to a, a, major, uh, uh, a major artery in their body, they will bleed out very quickly. You cannot live without blood. It's essential to life. No blood, no life. Blood carries nutrients to our body. It carries oxygen to our brain, and it, it gives us strength. And, and we know, friend, today that without blood, there is no strength in our bodies. Uh, there's no oxygen. There's no thinking. There's nothing going. Life is in the blood, and the Bible tells us that life is in the blood. And not only my physical life is in the blood, but I'll tell you something today. My, my spiritual life is in the blood this, as the blood is spoken of many times in the scripture, it is spoken of as sacrificial blood. As we know that, that many uh, animals were sacrificed in the Old Testament for that sacrifice. It is talking about sacrificial blood. It is talking about atoning blood. That the, the atoning blood would only for, one, only for a little bit, it would cover the sins. It would not take them away, but it would cover the sins and make it that so that when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he would take away their sins. It was just a temporary offering, that sacrificial blood was. It's purchasing blood, friend. My salvation is bought, thank God, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and by that only. Oh, my Friend, it belittles God when we try to work our way to heaven. Amen. Those that try to work their way to heaven is belittling to the Lord because Jesus paid my sin debt. Amen. On the cross of Calvary, he paid my sacrificial death so that I, he purchased me on the cross. And also it is securing blood. I'm secured, thank God, for heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend, the devil hates it when someone stands and proclaims the blood of Jesus. And when we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, the devil hates it because he can't get past the blood. The blood is what has, has sealed his faith in eternity in the lake of fire, all because of the purchasing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we said, the first mention of blood in the Scripture is in the book of Genesis, and it's not particularly mentioned as blood, but we see it as the blood sacrifice that the Lord in the Garden of Eden offered when he uh, made uh, uh, clothes of skin 
uh, for Adam and Eve in the garden. Blood had to be shed for it to cover them, for those hides, for those skins of those animals to cover them. Blood had to be shed. And friend, we see that as the first mentioned principle of of bloodshed, of sacrifice was when in the, in the Garden of Eden Adam and Eve saw themselves naked and the Lord provided uh, coats of skin for them off of animals and that is the mention of always been the blood, friend. It's always been the blood that has saved men and that has caused men to go to heaven. It's always been the blood. We see in just a few minutes here now as we go to the Word of God, we see that the blood of animals in the Old Testament was not sufficient. It was used in the Old Testament, but it was not sufficient for me, amen, and for you for time and eternity. In the Old Testament, every day, morning and evening, they will be offering blood for a sacrifice for their sins, to do away with their sins, to cover their sins for that particular day. And then yearly, as we read to you here, the high priest of God, amen, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, and there before the holy place of God, he would offer blood on the mercy seat. He would offer that blood, and it would be acceptable to God, and it would cover the sins of the people for a year, those sins that they didn't know about. Do you ever do things, and after a while you see how wrong it was? Friend, they'd do things and not understand it was wrong, and out of ignorance they would sin, and then out of, of uh, knowledge they would sin, and that priest would go in before the Holy of Holies, and he would... He would offer the blood and amen when the blood was accepted of God that priest would come out and they would see him coming out knowing that that blood sacrifice had been accepted and that for, uh, for that period of time their blood was covered and so we see it's always been the offering of the sacrificial blood the blood was used of animals that were without spot and without blemish those animals couldn't have a blemish on them they couldn't be spotted they couldn't be scabbed they couldn't have scurvy they couldn't have balls they couldn't have any anything that was wrong with them they had to be perfect animals do you know what a chore that must have been to try to keep enough animals to sacrifice blood that would that would cover their sins for a season oh my friend what a job it was to live under the law what a job it was to live under that Old Testament sacrifice but I'm telling you today friend all of that looked forward to the supreme sacrifice of the perfect Lamb of God on the cross of Calvary all of it looked forward to the day when Jesus would come amen and shed his life's blood for me and shed his life's blood for you that we through the blood of Jesus might have eternal redemption Oh, I'm glad for the blood today, my friend. And we see that blood sacrifice saved the children of Israel when they were down in Egypt. That blood sacrifice that was sprinkled on the, on the lentils and, the, and the, 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 the side post, the door and the side post, all that blood that was sprinkled there when the death angel came by, he saw the blood of that and he said he passed over them. Hey man, they were saved by the blood. They were saved from death by the blood of that lamb. Oh my friend, I'm glad the blood has been applied. Has it been applied to you? Do you know the lamb of God? Has he touched you and, and purchased you and you've allowed him to save you by his blood? As Isaac was being offered on the altar of sacrifice by Abraham, there was a sacrifice made. Abraham had intentions of slaying his son Isaac. When he took him up, you know the story, when Abraham took him up and, and uh, he took the knife and he, because God said to do it and because he was going to be obedient to God, he took that knife and there was Isaac and he was willing to offer his son Isaac on that, on that uh, altar of, of uh, sacrifice. And I believe as he drew the knife back with all intention, you know why? He said, well, if I do it, God's going to raise him back up. He had faith in God. Abraham uh, was a man of faith. And as Abraham offered Isaac, the Bible doesn't say he started to offer Isaac. The Bible says he offered Isaac. Because in his mind, if God had not have stopped him, he would surely have offered his son, believing God, having faith in God that God would raise him up again. But you know what saved the life of Isaac and saved his own bloodshed that day? There was a ram. Got his horns caught in the thicket just by chance. No, I'm telling you, friend, God provided himself a lamb. God provided himself that ram for that offering for Isaac. It saved Isaac. 
Friend, we can go all through the scripture and we can name time after time when blood sacrifice was used so that, so that someone would not have to die. It, this blood sacrifice, all of this is the perfect picture of the Lamb of God. The perfect picture of the Lamb of God slain for you and I. Without, without blood, there is no remission of sin. Verse number 22, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no, no remission of sin. Friend, there's no way for a man, woman, boy, or girl to get to God without the blood of Jesus. They can't, after you're dead, they can't nobody pray you out of purgatory. They can't nobody for no amount of money pray you out of hell. If you, my friend, by the grace of God, have been bought by the price of the blood of Jesus, friend, there's nothing that can let, that can let you go to hell either, amen. Because you're born again by the grace of God. Christ's blood was shed to take away my sin. As far as the east is from the west, so hath he removed our transgressions. Cast them into the depths of the sea. And see those Old Testament sacrifices, what they did, but they would cover it. It was offered as a covering, not to take them away, but an atonement, a covering of sin. But friend, the day that Jesus on the cross of Calvary said it is finished, he shed his last drop of blood for you and for me. And when he said it is finished, guess what that means? Thank God it's finished. It's done. It's over with. The sacrifice, the, the, the pure sacrifice has been, has been presented and it's been accepted of God. And now, my friend, all of these Old Testament sacrifices pointed to the day when Jesus, the Lamb of God, would come and give his life on the cross of Calvary. We see that the, that the uh, shedding of the blood of Christ was ordained by the Father because the Father sent His Son. And the, the Father ordained that sacrifice. There was nothing else that was going to do. There was not a human being on earth that was perfect before that could offer themselves as a sacrifice. There was no one without sin. The only person without sin was the person of Christ Jesus. Amen. And he, no doubt, it grieved the Father and it hurt the Father, but he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And so it was ordained by the Father that the Son would come and would give his life and shed his blood. Hallelujah for me. Amen. I don't have to go to hell because he did it. Amen. Because Jesus shed his life's blood. I don't have to go, and ha go to hell. Does that get a hold of you this morning? Does that Listen, if it wasn't for the blood of Christ, we'd all be in hell today or on our way there. And you know what? That's what we deserve because of our life of sin, because of our life of, uh, of wickedness, and because of what we are. We're sinners, but, but thank God we're saved by the grace of God. But because we're sinners, we deserve all of that. But Jesus loved me. Hallelujah. Jesus loved you. Amen. And he said, I'll go. So it was ordained by the Father and the sacrifice was offered by our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As that holy high priest of God would enter into the holy of holies one time a year. My high, oh hallelujah, my high priest in the Lord Jesus Christ. He, hey, that high priest going every year. Now I'm told all kinds of things. This is history and maybe, maybe fact to it and may not. But I've been told by, uh, you know, by, by study that, that many times that high priest, he had, to be, he had to first make sacrifice for himself before he could go into the Holy of Holies. And it, you know, it, was, it was something very important for him to go in there. But in that Holy of Holy places was where God dwelt and where God would meet him. And I've been told that when he would go in there that the bells on his, on his garments as they would jingle and as he moved about and they would jingle, they would know that he was still alive. But if, but if, if the sacrifice wasn't accepted or if that, if that high priest had sin in his life, then he'd go in there and God would smite him, God would kill him. And therefore he could not offer the sacrifice. Nobody else could go in and bring him out. 
Nobody else could go in there and get him out because it's the holy place of God. And if anyone went in without the sacrifice, if anyone went into that place, then they surely would not return either. But they said they would tie a rope around his foot. And then if he got in there and they heard it quit jingling, they would pull him back out because no one could go in there. It was a holy of holy places. But don't you know they were glad for the time when that high priest come out of there still a jingling and said, raise his hand, say he's accepted the sacrifice. Hallelujah, God. Oh, friend, ain't it a wonderful day when Jesus before the throne of God went to the, went to the Father and he offering his own blood said, Father, will this do? And oh, hallelujah. God the Father looks at him and said, Oh, that's an acceptable sacrifice. And because of that, mankind can be redeemed. I think of the story of the... <clears throat> to make it quickly, I think, think of a story that's been... Man's been preached up here a couple of times. It's called the fit man that would lead the goat, that would lead the scapegoat with the sins upon him. And that scapegoat would be led out into the wilderness to be, to be let loose. And it took that fit man to drag that goat. Into, that's why he had to be a fit man because he couldn't, he couldn't do nothing but get that goat out of there. Push, pull, drag, whatever. He had to lead him out into the wilderness. But don't you know that they were wondering, did, did the goat make it out? Did he get him out of here? Is our sins gone on that goat? Because that's another way of sacrifice. Did our, are our sins gone on that scapegoat? And then don't you know it's a wonderful day when they saw that fit man two or three days later after leading him into the wilderness. Here come that fit man back. The goat's gone. The goat's gone. The goat's gone. Hey man, friend, I'm glad that thank God when Jesus died for me. Hey man, he didn't only, hey, he forgave me. He cleansed me. And now my sins are gone. My sins are gone. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm saved today. My sins are gone. Are your sins gone today? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, I like this bloody religion. I'm glad, thank God, that it's by the blood that I'm saved. It's by the blood that I've been redeemed. It's by the blood that I've been bought with a price. We see the blood was offered by the Son. It was observed by the Spirit of God. And it was observed as complete. A complete sacrifice. It was a perfect sacrifice. And it's an all-sufficient sacrifice. Hallelujah. Never to be, never, never would Jesus have to die again and suffer for my sins because it was a sufficient sacrifice. And then number three, and I'll be through, the blood has never lost its power. 2,000 plus years ago, Jesus came, lived a sinless life, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, went to the cross of Calvary. And before that time, as he was beaten and scourged and his blood was shed, friend, I believe it was gathered up. I believe his blood was gathered up and every drop of it offered before the Father. And when he shed his last drop on the cross of Calvary, friend, that was enough. That was all sufficient blood and it's never lost its power. Number one, it's never lost its power to save sinners. If you're here today lost without God, don't you think for a minute that God can't save you? Amen. His blood is all sufficient to save whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. If you've never been birthed into the family of God, I want to tell you today, friend, the best way for you to get to heaven, the only way for you to get to heaven is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's the only way. You can't get there anyway. Your goodness, your best that you can do will never get you to God. But if you're lost without God and you believe the gospel, and you too can be saved by the grace of God. Number two, it's to save sinners past, present, and future to come. And last of all, Satan cannot defeat the blood of Jesus. If you're saved by the blood of Christ, friend, you're eternally saved. Your sins have been washed away. You're clean before the Father because of the blood of Christ. You say, preacher, what about what I done yesterday that wasn't right with God? Plead the blood. Father, forgive me. And how are you forgiven of sins today? It's by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
His blood is sufficient to forgive sins in your past, in your present, in your future. There's a song that goes, Once I wandered in sin's dark night, I had no way to make my wrongs right. But then the old accuser came to and said, and I forget the rest of the word, so you know what it is. But I tell you what it is, it is still the blood. It's still the blood. It's still the blood that saves from sin. It's still the blood, friend. And as long as I live and have a breath, I want to preach about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, listen, I'm not going to preach you no social gospel. You forget that mess. Amen. You want somebody telling you how good looking you are and how well off you are and if you'll just do right and feel good about yourself, you'll be all right. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you that Jesus is the answer to all your problems. If you've got a sin problem, he's the answer. If you're lost, he's got an answer. If you're depressed, amen, he's got the answer. If you're feeling bad, he's got the answer. It's the blood of Jesus, thank God, that cleanses from all sin. Mark me down with a few friends that by the grace and the help of God I'll stand for the word of God and what it tells about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad I'm born again. I'm glad I know him. Father, we thank you Lord for the word of God today. Lord, I'm glad that it's still the blood. Lord, if there's someone here today that never had that blood applied, God, would you touch them with the convicting power of the Spirit of God? Would you help them to understand that they must be born again? And Lord, I pray, God, that the message, God, would go to us every day and help us to remember, God, that we're saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Help us now to hold your name high in Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. I wonder if there's someone here this morning say, Preacher, I've never had that blood applied. I'm not saved. I wonder if you'd raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost without God. Is there someone raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. Right quickly, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Is there another one like to raise your hand and say, Preacher, I'm lost. I've never been saved and I don't want to go to hell. Is there another one right quickly? I wonder if there's a child of God this morning say, Preacher, I've been having a battle with the devil. I've been fighting hell by the acre and I want to plead the blood of Jesus today over my problems and ask God to help me. I wonder if there's someone raise your hand. Say, preacher, pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Listen, the devil can't get through the blood. I tell you what, next time you have a bad day, you still you start singing about the power and the blood. Amen. You can start singing about what can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And you watch how the devil has to flee. Amen. If you're here today and lost to that God, and you want to get saved today, why don't you come down to this altar and we'll pray with you. Is there one like to come? While we wait a minute, I wonder if there's a child of God here today, say, Preacher. I'd just like for you to pray for me, and I'd like to come down to the altar and let you pray for us today that we might get closer to the Lord, that we might understand that we're living in the last days and we need help of God. Is there someone I'd like to come? While everyone stands, no, no one looking around, we're going to be dismissed in prayer here in a minute. But if you'd like to use this altar, while we wait for a minute, if you'd like to use this altar, will you come right now? We're going to close here in just a second. This is your opportunity. Would you come? Father, again, we thank you. We bless you today. God, for all your goodness. Lord, I thank you for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin. I pray right now, God, that you'd help us, God. I pray the Spirit of the living God, Lord, would move, Lord, with these that are, admittedly, they say they're lost, and I pray that you'd continue to help them, God, and help them to understand, God, what they must do to be saved is call on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray, God, for these hands that were raised that are, Lord, seem like the devil's fighting on all sides. God, I, I plead the blood of Jesus for them and ask you, God, to help. Help in my own life. Lord, help us to stand true to the word of God. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Anyone got a testimony on your heart before we dismiss? Amen. Now, I'm going to go to the back door. After we dismiss, I'm going to go to the back door, but I ain't going to shake your hand, all right? But I'm not mad at you. I'm just going to look at you and nod, all right? Amen. Or we can salute. Paul Harvey said just salute each other. Amen. I don't know about that, but anyway. 
Uh, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. All right? All right. Brother, Brother uh, John, will you dismiss us, please, sir?